Hello and welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor Paul Markle and today we're going to talk about PMAG's Magpul and the gun ban. Now who would have thought that this very simple piece of plastic and spring steel combination and if you don't like the black ones you can go ahead and get the ones with the windows or the uh, olive drab ones or tan or what have you. Who would have thought that something as simple as a PMAG would be all over the news. I mean, people who never heard of an AR-15 a month ago and certainly never heard of the PMAG or Magpul, people all over the United States and all over the world now know about Magpul. Well, why is that? It's because the uh, uh, liberal Democrats in the House and Senate in Colorado decided to impose an arbitrary ammunition ban or a ban on how much ammunition you as a citizen should be trusted to have in your gun at one time. And if it gets signed into law, Magpul has said, Magpul's in Colorado, that we're going to take all of our many, many jobs, they employ hundreds of people in their facility, and they don't just make PMAGs, they make stocks and all kinds of accessories, but uh, Magpul said, hey, if you pass the law, we're closing up shop and we're leaving. And of course that's got the uh, the the big media and the liberal democrats are all a twitter and they're like, "Oh, you you can't just you're not allowed to take your jobs and go somewhere else." And I think everybody out in the audience right there will applaud P or Magpul for doing that. There are a lot of companies in the last week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks that have come on board, firearms manufacturers that have said, "Look, if your state passes a law saying that the citizen is not allowed to own X, whatever it is, whether it's an AR, whether it's a magazine that holds more than whatever arbitrary amount. I mean, it's this, this magazine count thing has become, it's gone from the ridiculous to the sublime now. It's like, oh, we can't have 10, we have to have 7 or 8 or 15 or whatever. It's ridiculous. But a lot of companies, specifically uh, this week, Wilson Combat got on board and they put out a, a press release stating that uh, they will no longer ship their products to government agencies in states that prohibit the citizens from owning that same tool. So basically, if the citizen cannot own an AR-15 that holds more than three rounds or five or seven or eight or whatever, then they're not going to sell them to government agencies. And a lot of other companies, Bravo Company USA is on that bandwagon, CMMG is on it right now. Uh, so a lot of big companies, medium-sized companies, and small companies uh, as well are on the uh, list. A list of companies that will not sell their products in states to government agencies where citizens are not allowed to own them. And there's a little bit of a... Uh, kind of a gap in, in our camp on that because there's people that are still stuck in the, they they infected by the reasonableness disease. And uh, I actually, and, and cops too. I was a cop, listen up. I was a cop for 17 years. All right, so I know cops. I've been a cop. I know where they come from. I graduated first in my class in the academy. So haters suck it. But uh, a lot of cops out there are like, well, that's bull crap. And, and it's like, well, First of all, you have to understand that somebody like Wilson Combat or Bravo Company or Magpul or whomever, Magpul's not on the New York ban list, but uh, they're saying that they won't sell to government agencies in that state. They're not saying that you, as a citizen, can't purchase it. Let's say you're a police officer in the state of New York. They're not saying, hey, you, as a citizen and or a police officer in the state of New York can't buy it as an individual. They're saying that they won't sell them to government agencies. Government agencies that happen to be spending your tax money to purchase the equipment while telling you you can't own it. Is that not irony? They're saying, hey citizen, you can't be trusted with those big, mean, nasty PMAGs. We can't allow you to have those. Oh, but we're going to take your tax money and we're going to buy a whole bunch of them and we're going to give them to government officials. What? That's kind of crazy in my book. But uh, there's a, a list online right now. There's a website called thepoliceloophole.com. If you go there, they have an entire list of uh, firearms manufacturers, accessory manufacturers, ammo man manufacturers that are on the list that have said, hey, if the citizen can't own it, 
then the civil servant, we're not going to sell it to them either. We have to be fair across the board. Now, we're not talking about citizens owning M1 Abrams tanks or F-16 jets. We're talking about small arms. We're talking about an arbitrary amount of ammunition that can go in your magazine or not. And uh, for those of you who have friends that are on the, well, cops should be allowed to have it, or police need to have that, the citizens don't. And you say, okay, well, why, why shouldn't we limit police officers to say 10 rounds in their guns? Well, because they, they need it. They, they, you don't want it to be outgunned by criminals, do you? So it's okay for my wife, who's at home by herself, to be outgunned by a criminal. What are we saying when we say things like that? That if you are employed by a government agency, your life is more valuable than, let's say, the life of my children, my wife, my mom, my dad, my aunts, and my uncles. They don't work for a government agency, so their lives aren't as valuable and don't need to be protected. Oh, no, I'm not saying that at all. Well, what you're saying is that the government agency should have better equipment than the citizen to protect themselves from the bad guys in the world. Think about it for a second. Hmm. So if you want to check it out, it's called thepoliceloophole.com. It has a full list of companies who signed on and said that they will not sell to government agencies in states that prohibit ownership by the citizens. Today's recommended reading is the book Black Hawk Down. Now, as I record this, it's been almost 20 years. It'll be 20 years this coming October since the incident in Mogadishu happened, since it took place. And a lot of you guys out there in the viewing audience were probably, uh, I would estimate, not paying very close attention 20 years ago when this happened. I remember when it happened. Uh, I had just gotten out of the Marine Corps active duty, and I was disgusted by how our government basically hung those guys out to dry. But rather than take my word for it, you should go ahead and pick up Black Hawk Down, and you can, I will put a link up for you, I'll put an Amazon link up for you guys. Uh, Mark Bowden is the author of that. And when you read it, don't just read it for entertainment's sake, read it and think about how did our guys, how did the good guys deal with the bad guys, and how did the bad guys behave because they were essentially insurgents, uh, insurgent terrorist type people. So read Black Hawk Down, check it out. It's been almost 20 whole years since it happened. A lot of you guys out there, you young puppies, might not remember it. So until next time, for all things Student of the Gun, go to studentofthegun.com.